good afternoon. My name is Ruth, this is Faye Hollow Homestead, and I, I normally like, I like to do th videos where I show you things, uh, kind of let you know what I'm doing, show you how I'm doing it, why I'm doing it. I give you tours on my gardens. Um, I, not that you guys need to be taught, you guys know so much more than I do, but I, I teach you how I do things and why, and then you guys tell me <laughs> why you do things your way and, and usually that's better. <laughs> but today I just, I've done all this stuff before in videos like how to transplant a shrub and you know, how to, um, how to prune. I think I've done a how to prune thing, but yeah, I have it, lavender. And then and then I showed you some of my other, other herbs that I was pruning and and I'm just, I'm doing that and I'm weeding and I mean, there's not like, I'm not doing anything new today, but I did want to have the, the camera on for some of it because, you know, I'm doing a lot of stuff and I'm kind of changing things around and, and so I'm going to try to kind of just do like a, a vlog day, I guess. I'm, I'm honestly having a really hard time today. Uh, Yesterday was was a little bit stressful for me. So today is just kind of I don't know. It's one of those days where I'm just feeling Really down on myself <laughs> like um, Like I don't know if you guys ever have those days where you just don't feel um, I don't know For I can't speak for guys, but I know girls we have this sometimes where we just don't feel beautiful uh, I'm not feeling like a good parent, you know, that the house is, the house is, uh, is a little bit disorganized because, I mean, we're just, we're such a small, we're living in such a small place and the, um, and I'm trying to put up all this food and produce and dry herbs and like there's just stuff everywhere and as you live, as your kids get older, things accumulate and there's just no other places to put things, so it feels cluttered and feeling overwhelmed trying to trying to keep the house nice, trying to keep the gardens nice, trying to do homeschooling, trying to do my job, um, and and you know make meals that are good. And I mean, we got all this produce coming in from the gardens, and it's just you know it's just difficult. I'm just feeling overwhelmed, <laughs> feeling overwhelmed, feeling like a failure, feeling like you know, I, oh gosh please don't take this the wrong way because I know God's promises are true and I know that they're going to be fulfilled but it just today feels like we're never gonna we're never gonna have the house that you know that we're um that has been promised and um and I know is coming it just it just I'm impatient okay I'm uh, like I want it today but you know yeah I don't really, because I know God's timing, you know, it's it's perfect, and and so uh, I don't need it now. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm somebody who likes things to be very neat. I was an incredibly messy person for a while, and um, I just decided to change my ways, and it stuck, and I really like being neat, and the house being a mess, and the food forest being a mess, and, um, and just feeling like there's not enough time in the day. It's just, it, it's overwhelming today, today. Uh, but I know how to fix it, you know, just keep plowing ahead, keep having faith, pray, you know, speak in tongues, you know, do the, do the things that, you know, just the next right thing, right? Just do the next right thing and things will come together and, you know, I'm grateful for my family, grateful for you guys. And so, um, what's the best thing for me to do? I know it's to come work out in the garden. Um, uh, as I'm out here, my husband is mowing the lawn, so I get to watch him mow the lawn. Usually he doesn't wear a shirt when he mows the lawn. That makes me happy. I don't know if I've ever done like, just like a, hey, this is my day, vlogging day in the garden. But I'm going to do it today, and uh, if you like it, let me know. Um, if you're like, yeah, yeah, whatever, Ruth, we want tutorials on how to do 
you know, stuff, let me know that too. And, um, but I am putting out this video because, uh, I think it's going to help me, uh, see past how I'm feeling, uh, and kind of change my mind. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to be planting my, oh, there's a hummingbird sitting on my nectarine tree. Uh, uh, I'm going to actually be moving my uh, butterfly bush because I was looking at the garden right outside my house and there's some bare spots that I don't really want to leave bare and um, in this whole idea of creating this oasis for us, uh, I have a very, very tight budget on it. Um, and so I'm going to do cuttings or use what I have uh, to do as much as I possibly can. And so the butterfly bush is kind of, I've been dealing with this for, for a while. It was supposed to be a, a, um, a dwarf, but either it's just really, really happy where it is, but it is, it's growing bigger than I thought it was going to grow. And so it's filling up an area that I wanted to have as a pathway to be able to access other parts of the food forest. And so I'm going to move that. And then, uh, I already dug up my Rosa Sharon's uh, that were in the vegetable garden. I had showed that to you guys in a previous video in my vegetable garden tour uh, that I was going to move those. And then I'm going to be moving my um, my hydrangea that uh, a very dear friend of mine gave me uh, the day that my dad passed. And um, she it was in a pot and she just, uh, it looked like something that you'd get from like, you know, the gifts, the, the place where there's like flowers and balloons and stuff at like a a Kroger or a Harris Teeter or something like that and um and it was beautiful and it was so sweet and I I wanted to keep that forever and so I planted it and it's doing well but it's not doing as good as it could in the area that it is I just I'm just in a, I gotta change things mood I guess <laughs> so uh so yeah that's what I'm doing today uh I hope you guys I hope you guys stick with me for it look at these beautiful butterflies on the scarlet sage they're Twitter pated, I think. Here's the butterfly bush. And, you know, I really love it here. I think it's really great, but I'm just finding it difficult to get past this to all the things that are behind it, like the currents and things like that. And I think I'd rather put like another tree here, like a fruit tree or something like that. Okay, here it is, it's out. And I'm going to probably make a little pathway that goes back here. That way I can access this side over here. I can go this way. I won't have to walk through the, the, the flower bed and the tree right there anymore. I'll just have a direct path to this tree, the peonies, the blueberries, the currants, uh, all those things back there. So um, there we go. And probably right here in the fall, I'll put a tree. I don't know what it's gonna be. It'll be something good though. That's exciting. And here is the bush. I mean, look at how big this thing is. That's gonna be quite a dramatic difference when I plant that by the house. I did come in here and tidy up a little bit earlier as I was just sitting and dwelling and praying and all sorts of stuff, but uh, I cut back the, uh, the Roman chamomile here and it's starting to spread, which is really wonderful. Uh, opened up the way for the lupine and the zinnias back here, cut back the, cut back the comfrey. Uh, and there's actually a few liatris that made it through the vole attack, which is exciting. And apparently they brought a couple of the the bulbs down here, so there's gonna be Liatris growing right there, which is great. And I cut back the Shasta Daisy because, um, well, it was all dead, heads on it. And so now, since I cut it back, you can see like there's little spots where more daisies could potentially grow from. I would love to get another, another bloom out of this guy. That would be really wonderful. And I'm going to transplant that lily that's behind it to right here. Actually, 
actually let me do that right now. Never mind. I'm not going to do that. I'm getting distracted. Um, I'm going to stick with the ones that I'm transplanting to the house and then I'll come over. It'll be good to just finish a job. So let me show you the hydrangea that I want to transplant. So here's the hydrangea and it's just been in shade the entire time. Okay, so I'm thinking about putting the butterfly bush right here in this curve because the, uh, the quail enclosure, we're going a different route. We're not actually going to put the uh, aviary there anymore. Um, so I need something to kind of fill that space. Uh, I'm going to put the other hydrangea right there. It looks like it's planted, but it's not yet. And then I'm going to put the two uh, rows of Sharon's. I think I'm going to put one rose of Sharon here and then one on the other side of the, of the trellis there. So that'll fill in some things. You see, I got a nice, a nice line of shrubbery going on here. The clematis is going to fill in uh, really well. This will fill in and we'll just kind of like have this alcove alcove a very peaceful foliage and be able to sit and enjoy your fire. Okay, I got these things soaking in some water for a little bit while I go plant the hydrangea first. This is the soil here. When you try to dig, it's like every time you put your, your shovel into the ground, there's just a big rock. Here are the rocks. It came out of this one hole. <laughs> Those are some nice ones. I'm kind of excited about that. So I'm gonna go get the uh, the Rose of Sharon now. Okay, so here we go. We got the Rose of Sharon in. Got the hydrangea in. Now I gotta put the other one in. Okay, here we go. Second Rose of Sharon is in. Okay, so here is one Rose of Sharon, the purple one. Came on down here my handsome husband taking a break from his stuff uh there's the other rose of sharon and then i got the other hydrangea put in right here and then all the way down here is the butterfly bush so this is the look so far of course you know the oak leaf hydrangeas they're gonna get to be like 12 by 12 almost some say eight by eight. Everybody says a little bit different. Eight to eight to 15 by 15. Uh, of course you can prune them to keep them the way that you want them. Uh, the Rose of Sharon, that's gonna get quite large and shrubby. Uh, well, tree shrubby. And then uh, this hydrangea, I'm not exactly sure, but this butterfly bush is gonna get to be about eight by eight. And I'm thinking the oak leaf down here about 10 by 10. So. We've got this nice big hedge started and it's just gonna really enclose the area and I think it looks good already. So now we can just enjoy. So this is our haven on the weekends or at night uh, in the evenings in the summer. We come out here, we have fires all the time. We have fires all the time. And something that I've started last year is I put a lot of um, Corsican mint in the gravel and you can see it coming up in different areas. The reason for that is I would like for everything to become like this rather than the gravel. That's what I want between these big stones here. Uh, you can tell we were watering. And, um, and it took, it didn't really take very well last year because the chickens were out here and every time I'd put a new plant in, they'd scratch it up. But now that the chickens are put away, there's a lot more opportunity for it to spread like it is doing right back here. Now in these walls, again, we're going for like lush oasis, right? So I've got a lot of things growing out of the rocks. And I just think that it's really beautiful the way that that's happening there. You've even got the yarrow. Now the tips of the ferns have definitely burnt off a little bit, gotten singed from the fire. Uh, we've got lemon balm, we've got some thyme, creeping thyme. I even have hen and chicks sporadically throughout the rocks and uh, these lanterns give off a real soft glow almost like there's candles in there and it's really great I need to clean up this stuff after deciding to change where we're putting the aviary and such uh, and then planting these things but after I get those put away this is a this is a really great spot to hang out and it's it's definitely our oasis 
and it makes me very happy and it makes my husband very happy so it's good stuff and here is the last Rosa Sharon that I put in this is the pink one put next to the rock that has our pawpaw fruit on it uh, next to it and Sawyer's posing but uh, it's a little sad right now because we just transplanted it but I think it's gonna look real pretty right there that'll be a nice place to sit too so okay so I got those uh, planted over there and now I got all this corn cut this is the corn stalks that we harvested already or maybe the uh, stalks didn't um, create any corn cobs or maybe the corn cobs were just extra itty bitty tiny and so I'm gonna be hanging these from the clothesline to dry so that I can have some fall decor and I love I love decorating with corn stalks because uh, they're just beautiful and uh, and they're great for for fall uh, I also am going to be hanging some sunflower heads as well and getting those dried out so that we can start harvesting the seeds so things are coming along so I've kind of raked up the area where the Rosa Sharon was but I'm going to get rid of all these discomfrey this fruit tree does not need this much comfrey around it. Uh, it has a ton of variegated comfrey on the other side. And I have comfrey all over my other garden. And what I really want to do is I want to get some of this comfrey root out and use that to make some salves because the root is the most, the most healing part if you're going to be using it to make a salve. Now, if you're going to drink it as a tea, you definitely don't want to use the root, but this comfrey is coming home with me. So I realized what I'm doing now. I am so frustrated with the uh, the clutter in my house that I'm coming out and I'm taking it out on the garden and I'm <laughs> I'm just removing all the things that I felt like I've wanted to remove for a while, getting rid of the clutter, getting rid of the clutter out here. But this comfrey is actually the first comfrey I ever planted, and I've been using it kind of as my my seed stock. So. Um, getting it out now. Uh, I gotta show you how big these roots are because these are three, four year old comfrey plants. Look at this. I mean, those are chunky. Look at this. This, this root ball, that's huge. That's, that's much bigger than my thumb. And then there's just like, you can see I ripped some off, you know, pulling them out. I know for a fact that because I left some root parts down in here, that comfrey is going to come up again, and that's fine. I'll just pull it out again. It's not that difficult to pull out. Um, it's actually really easy. So getting this stuff out is super cool, but that's gonna make some awesome medicine. My father-in-law just made the ramp to the chicken house be something that the goats could not climb on or get into because he doesn't want them getting it in the chicken coop because chicken food for uh, goats is very very bad and cookie is just giving it all she's got trying to get in there and it's not working what do you think chardonnay do you try to i bet you did okay so i've got a nice big pile of comfy roots and look at this big nice bed that's all cleared out that I can now start planting some fall crops in. And because those trees are gone, and I am going to get rid of some of these weeds right here, uh, give a chance for those flowers to pop through that I planted. Um, there's going to be more sun hitting this than there was, and so things will do better here uh, that need more sun. So that's really good. I got rid of most of the comfrey in here. I am going to get rid of more, but right now... Um, I'm moving on to other things because today is not necessarily about completing everything. It's about doing the things that I want to do in the garden, which happen to be refilling the vole things because I'm sick and tired of finding new holes. Okay, I am ready to go inside and have game night with my kids. Um, let me show you what it looks like. It's, it's kind of shocking. Uh, I feel like I went completely nuts, but really all I did was I took out the, the moonwort um, 
and the comfrey. So I didn't take out the comfrey underneath all the fruit trees. I did take out half the comfrey under the cherry tree by where the Rose of Sharon was. Um, and then I just cut back down to the base all the rest of the comfrey around the front couple uh, trees and I took out that butterfly bush. And so it looks bare in here. Um, that comfrey really takes up a lot of visual room. Um, and it just shows me that I'm, how glad I am that I took the amount of cuttings, cuttings that I did from all of my blueberry bushes and everything like that, because I have a ton of room in here still to just load this thing up with berry bushes and, and I need to get that done. So taking the corn away really opened up back there and then cutting back the comfrey and taking out the moonwort. I mean, really, that's all I did. Maybe I took out a couple of things of grass there, here and there. I did cut back the thyme right there. I trimmed that back, pruned it. It'll get bushy again. Um, but that just looks crazy bare. And then coming over here too, like, that's nuts. And then over here by this fruit tree, you can see I have a new, I found a new hole, so there's a new vole trap right there. But I mean, it's just really, really open and bare and the squash and the peanuts and the, um, the sweet potato are really going to enjoy having all this extra sun uh, exposure. So we'll see what happens. I think that'll be really good. Okay. So tomorrow I'm going to come out here and I'm going to um, put all that comfrey into buckets and fill them with water. The mosquitoes are coming out, so. Um, and then, you know, just pick up all the weeds and the extra stuff. And then I've got to weed a lot more, but uh, it looks dramatically different. I feel, I feel somewhat better. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't fix everything. Being in the garden doesn't fix everything. You know, I still, Sometimes you just have bad days. Sometimes you just have down days. And, you know, I'm just, I'm counting this for the win because honestly, if I could have just stayed in bed all day and just, you know, stayed under the covers and not coming out at all, um, that's what I really wanted to do. I really, really wanted to do that. Um, but uh, you just... You can't hide, you know, you can't hide from the world. And at least now I have that, that satisfaction of knowing that, you know, while I'm at home, my traps are set. I might be catching voles even while I play with my kids, you know, um, that the garden right outside our house is prettier and it's getting, it's uh, growing into maturity and that's just going to get better and better every year. Uh, that's a perennial garden, all that stuff. I don't really have to do anything to it. Um, really low maintenance. Uh, and so uh, that's just a plant it and leave it kind of place. And here I just, here it feels good because I'm getting done the things that every time I walked in here and said, oh man, I wish I could get that done. I'm starting to do. So I even, I tied back the, the asparagus so that it wasn't falling everywhere into the pathways. I cut a lot of the grass um, and and that feeling of pride of accomplishment of, you know, I didn't stay in bed all day and I didn't, I didn't give in and I didn't give up. Um, and I, and I came out here and I did something and I made something more beautiful. And, um, I think that's a good goal every day. Make something more beautiful. Um, right? something. So I did that today. And uh, if you could subscribe, that would help me. Um, and, and hit the like button and the notification bell. And thank you so much for staying with me today. Um, tomorrow's going to be better. Tomorrow's going to be a lot better. And you guys, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, stay blessed.